it's uh, 1030, so uh, we'll open the meeting. I need a motion to uh, approve the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Public comment on items not on the agenda. I don't have any uh, comments for items not on the agenda at this time, except uh, if I do see it. Yeah, I, I just I just looked and saw that it was number two you had on here. Good morning, President Denton and members of the board. I'm Victoria Yokoyama representing Yokoyama Farms and I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. And I committed a letter uh, basically requesting some of the measures that have been documented through time over this past re year and most recently about levee construction that would save our house and also our river, most of our river, river frontage that is farmable uh, land. And in a letter by Mark Gilbert that I presented to the board at the last meeting, and also um, that I have attached to my current letter, uh, he specifically states that it is possible for us to have a uh, adjacent levee and a partially penetrating cutoff wall or relief well, as well as a berm that could then avoid the requirement to demolish our house in the use of a setback levy. So also, I am also going back to your letter as of September 6th of 2012 that specifically sa states that there will be consideration and evaluation of hybrid measures and the type of levy that Mr. Gilbert described for construction on our property. The also, at the last meeting, the Army Corps of Engineers did present information about their uh, efforts then to evaluate the whole levy process, uh, construction process, and possibly partnering with the city of Sacramento. And they are in fact considering then the I Street uh, bypass or diversion as well as widening the Yolo County bypass. So, you know, the, as far as the federal uh, evaluation is concerned, possibly harmonization between the state, the city, and also the federal government might lead to decisions that would then save our river frontage. I think also that um, the, as far as the Army Corps of Engineers is concerned, they have actually set a milestone, which is August of this year, to make their final evaluations and deliberations. So hopefully then that would be a part of the uh, process of the South Fork project to incorporate their evaluation uh, of measures to prevent uh, such radical uh, implementations of levy uh, improvements such as a setback levy, which would destroy homes and property. And, and so I look forward to that. Also, uh, I'm not, again, I'm going to reiterate that the California Department of Water Resources did reinforce our levy in 2006. And if you look at the logistics of that particular project, they brought in barges over the river that was filled with boulders and filled with rocks. And over a long period of time, they reinforced the water side of our levee. And if you look at that project alone, the logistics and the uh, magnitude of it, it was very, very um, impressive. It was also very expensive. But if you compare that to building a setback levee, the bottom line is, is that is a setback levee even possible if you look at the Army Corps of Engineers and their failed attempts over the past few years to build a setback levy at the southern edge of the Barge Canal and the, and the Sacramento River, they can't complete it. And that's just a minuscule amount of river frontage compared to the South Fork project. So hopefully then the setback levy will be not be your um, preferred choice, that the setback levy as we have brought forward and discussed many times will present its own environmental and its own uh, safety issues, and it's not a feasible option just based on the fact that economically it's possible because monies from the state can be gleaned due to this type of construction. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's the only uh, item we have on that. Uh, approval of the January the 10th, 2013 minutes. We need a motion for that. Second. It's, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the January the 10th minutes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Review the monthly year-to-date revenue and expenses. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this cash flow report summarizes receipts and expenditures for the month of December 2012. For the month of December, no significant revenue was received. Expenditures for December are indicated at about $1.5 million, the majority of which was spent on the South Fork project at $869,000, and there was also significant expenditures on the Rivers project of $510,000, $451,000 of which was the um, tree planting mitigation project. Year-to-date expenses are, are coming in about $7.8 million. The estimated cash position, including the cash position of the state funds, is about seven million. $5 million, and um, it won't show up in this report, but we received the first assessment payment of the year, which was uh, $1.9 million. Um, essentially, it reflects about the 2% growth of the rate increase over the last year. Um, we'll see that show up in the January report. Um, that pretty much ends the report for this month. I'll take any questions. A motion that we uh, accept the uh, review and expenses report. I think you do a good job. Thank you. I think you do a good job. Thank you. Consideration of amendment number one, the contract for the services between West Sacramento, Ed West Sacramento Area Flood Control Association and Crosser and Crawford. Chairman Denton, members of the board, um, I'm here to just to bring forward a, um, an administrative request that you extend the Crocker and Crocker contract for another six months. Crocker and Crocker has been providing effective communication and public relations services for West Africa for the last three years. Um, this uh, last year, we entered into a single year contract. Um, there's still some remaining funds in the contract between around $35,000. Um, we think that a six-month time period will give us an opportunity for them to continue what they're doing as well as um, consider how we're going to um, um, have communications and public relations firm going forward um, throughout the, uh, or what we anticipate is going to be necessary um, for the South Fork project going forward. So today we're just asking that you allow the contract to be amended um, for a six-month time period. Um, I want to draw attention to the fact that uh, the contract amendment talks about that there's a relationship between the city and Crocker and Crocker. That has to be changed to say actually uh, West Safka. So so for West Safka is the contracting agency with Crocker and Crocker. Um, but other than that, there's um, no other changes to the, uh, to the amendment itself. In the recitals where it uh, re refers to the city, uh, that will be corrected. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Any questions on the contract? Any questions, Lee? been moved and seconded that we approve the contract as amended and corrected. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. West Sacramento Area Flood Control Association project update. President Denton, members of the board. Um, as Mark mentioned earlier, we did receive our the first installment of the flood assessment for 
the 2013 year just shy of two million dollars and does represent about a two percent increase <coughs> over um, what we received last year um, and also uh, we're going to be going back out over the next few weeks um, to revisit the zero land value assessment for um, some of the um, for the previous tax year um, for the Southport project, um, the third administrative draft of the EIS EIR was released to the core um, uh, DWR and the Central Valley Flood Protection Board, Department of Fish and Wildlife um, last month. Uh, comments are due uh, this, this Friday. And we've scheduled a meeting um, with the core, uh, and tentative meeting anyways, with the core to review and discuss anticipated comments to be received so we can iron those out. Um, we also submitted uh, the 404 permit, which is the impacts to the waters of the U.S. to the core uh, last month, and that is still under review. Um, these biological assessments, also part of the environmental process, were, uh, there's two of them. One goes to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that was submitted last month to the core for their review before uh, going on to the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, the other biological assessment um, should be delivered to the Corps uh, end of this week um, for their review again before going on to the National Marine and Fishery Service for their concurrence. Um, and then the meeting that was scheduled for the 12th was um, convened um, to discuss um, addressing issues for the Environmental Endanger uh, excuse me, the Endangered Species Act. Uh, last month, end of last month, we had the real estate uh, acquisition relocation workshop. It was very well attended um, by property owners and residents. Um, we had over um, 60 uh, folks in attendance. The workshop was um, put on by representatives from Vendor Rosenthal, uh, moderated by Crocker Crocker. And um, a lot of information about the process of um, the appraisal process and um, acquisition, relocation and such was, was gone over during the meeting. Lots of questions and good information was distributed to a lot of the, um, the property owners. Um, overall, we felt it was a uh, very good and very well attended workshop, a lot of good information exchanged. Um, engineering design for Southport, um, we're sort of dialing in the very tail end of the 65% design. Um, one of the big components of that is um, the cost opinion for that um, level of design, and we're still fine-tuning that, and we do plan to bring that uh, back to the board either next month, hopefully, or possibly in April. Um, we want to make sure we have all of those um, knobs and levers turned um, so that we're looking at a good uh, estimate of the anticipated cost for the Southport project. We've also formed a constructability review team at this point to start uh, looking at the plans and specifications and the design as we start progressing towards 90% um, and uh, construction feasibility schedule and all of that. So um, to assist in that effort, we did go out to our on-call firm for construction management services um, and requested some propo proposals. We received two proposals um, of the three firms and then um, prepared a contract, or excuse me, a task order for um, MHM uh, in the amount of $58,000. Um, that was uh, given to the general manager, Ken Rusich. Um, it's within his signing authority. That contract has been executed, um, so we'll be engaging the services of MHM from this point forward, looking at uh, plans and specifications and design for constructability review. Uh, we're continuing to reach out to the utility companies to get their impact, um, excuse me, their feedback on um, utility relocations, uh, primarily PG&E and AT&T, um, in conjunction with the project. That's an ongoing effort. Uh, with the general reevaluation report, um, we continue to meet and work with uh, the core in advancing our report. Um, as has been mentioned a couple of times, there's been some 
recent discussion with the Corps about possibly combining uh, the Sacramento area uh, flood control agencies um, called uh, uh, their GRR, um, uh, commonly referred to as the Common Features GRR with the West Africa GRR. Um, those discussions, um, there was a internal project review meeting held by the Corps last week. Um, the vertical with district and, and court headquarters, one of the topics of discussion about the pro not only the progress of our GRR was also discussed at the time the progress of the Common Features GRR and some discussion about the possibility of combining the studies. Um, we have a meeting with uh, at core district uh, tomorrow um, to be briefed on the results of that um, discussion. So there will be more information to come um, at the next, probably the next board update on uh, where that stands and where it looks like we're getting going from this point forward. I think the most important um, aspect for us is that whatever process we're moving forward, we'll make sure that the core understands that there cannot be any slip in our schedule and that we meet our draft report um, schedule of uh, fall of this year um, so that we can be on schedule for credit eligibility and that we maintain the, you know, the schedule for the final chief report as well. And I think, oh, on our community rating system, we <laughs> received a, uh, Last month, we received a plaque from FEMA commemorating our Class 8 achievement. Evidently, that was an award that we received a couple of years ago, but for some reason or another, the plaque just made it to us. <laughs> so um, that is on display upstairs, I believe, at, in the city manager's office. Um, it was a little bit too large to, ca to carry down here in the <laughs> Treasury above, but it is a nice plaque. Also, um, DWR on emergency preparedness, DWR um, released the guidelines for the statewide grant uh, last week. Um, and this is for flood emergency response preparedness grant. I think ideally it's geared toward development of evacuation plans, procedures, and that sort of thing. Um, we plan on submitting a, a proposal um, or an application for the grant. Um, and this would dovetail very uh, nicely with our with the city's efforts for our EOC operations and our um, emergency management plans and so forth. So um, we're hopeful that we'll be able to secure some funds to um, develop that that plan and also um, a plan of that nature also uh, helps us to qualify for additional points for um, reducing our our community rating system as well. And I think the last, well, no, not the last item. Before the last item, um, just an update on the flood protection manager recruitment. Um, the first of the two um, scheduled interviews for the recruitment for the flood protection manager is scheduled for next Friday, the 22nd. Um, I think we have approximately uh, 10 candidates we'll be interviewing from that initial panel interview, uh, the top typically five uh, ranked candidates move forward for a department interview for additional screening and selection of the final candidate. And then I think last but certainly not least, um, and it generally under public relations, Crocker and Crocker uh, has um, updated the Wasapka website. It's got a new and fresh look. I think we've got it queued up to show uh, what the website uh, changes are like and. Lucy, if you'd like to maybe walk us through a few uh, pages of the layout. Good morning. Um, we have worked with um, city and with APCA staff to simplify the website and update everything in the website so that the public and stakeholders have an easier way of finding out the most current information in terms of anything from meetings and what's going on with projects. We've also simplified the ma navigation. And so I'll just walk you through a couple of the key things that we've done on here. Um, so we've stressed um, just the main messages on the front page and then there'll always be a what's new section. So anyone from the public can hop on here and find out what's new. 
we stressed some of the main things. We had gone through what's called Google Analytics and looked to see what people were looking for the most. Um, information on the meetings is featured here, the flood insurance. There's also a library. And then if anyone even wants to go to your partner's website, you can click on these links and go forward to your partner's websites as well. Um, if we go to the meetings page, for example, there's information today just generally talking about the types of meetings that you have. And then you can go to today's board meeting, get information about your board, what your board is comprised of, um, talk about how you'd like to have them come to your meetings, and then go down here and have archives of your agendas and staff reports, your minutes, and then um, go down further and go to last year's board meetings and also find your videos there, which um, we'll be able to sit here and watch you at the meeting today on video before too long. And then we're also, if you go back, um, we're also gonna have information on community meetings. So any upcoming community meetings will be featured here and then meeting archive information will be back in there as well. Um, so one of the things that had been um, that we had wanted to update were just things about the levy projects overview. So all of the information about all of your projects is featured here now in the same format and same type of information. So you can see projects that are in construction, projects that are in the design, wow. design phase, and then all the way down to projects that are complete and information about those as well. Um, at some point, some of these pages will have some more photos or diagrams added, but we wanted to get this first page up and completed. And so all the way through, there's just information all the way through um, this project. More robust um, programs that we're working on, like um, Southport, we've actually got a sub-navigation here where you can click and go inside there. This one's very robust and has all of the detailed drawings and information that was included. So any one of you that has, has been kind of searching for information in the past, hopefully this is easier for um, downloading and finding the information inside. So it might take a minute to relocate things, but hopefully this will be more helpful to everyone. That's the intent. So any ideas or anything that you have later on, please feel free to pass them along to Ken or anyone, and we'd be happy to help get those implemented. Very good. All thank right. you. Okay. Thank you so much. So just a couple questions, please. Um, mm -hmm. I was glad to hear that um, we don't want any delay in the GRR as far as we are concerned, uh, even though uh, some folks across the river, and they, they may want to, or the Corps may want to try to join some of those, but the GRR is so important to us from a timing perspective and from a financing perspective because of the 104 issues or the 404 issues, whatever they may be. Um, but um, just want to make sure that, I mean, that has already slipped a couple of years ago, um, and I want to make sure that that doesn't slip any further because that's critical for us because what it does is that if it does slip, well, it puts us in jeopardy um, from a um, another flood year. And so I, I, I was glad to hear you say that that's one of the issues we're dealing with here. One of the things that I didn't understand was the, the uh, 2014 EIP project, uh, mm -hmm. Sacramento Southport Early Implementation Project. You talk about the 104. It, I thought the 104, and I mean the, the uh, 404, in essence was sort of a really a dead issue. Everything was kicking into the, the 104. And um, I just, <coughs> I didn't quite understand um, the uh, financial implications of that. Well, the, the 404 permit is, it's a permit and I believe it's a federal permit, oh. um, and it's really about impacts to receiving waters of the U.S., so it's basically impacts to the Sacramento River. It's not really a cost issue. It's okay. part of part of the mix. I think you might be thinking about the previous 104, cre 104 crediting process, right. which now we're doing the 221 crediting. Okay. So those are completely different issues. All right, okay. But, I, you know, I mean, I think that, well, of course, um, we would like to have um, the core revert back to 
um, the financing arrangements that they had in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and so uh, I want to make sure that if we can qualify, we do qualify. And we have, we're spending some effort um, for speaking with folks back in Washington um, to get legislation changes um, that would either allow for 221 crediting to occur earlier mm -hmm. or possibly going back to the same criteria that was available under the 104, that would be the ideal, under the 104 crediting. Mm -hmm. It's unclear at this point where the ball is going to land, um, but we continue to, to push those efforts. We're not alone. Oh there, are no. other, there are other folks who are sending the same message. So there's a very clear message back in Washington from a lot of folks um, pushing for reasonable, and rational legislation to allow for folks to take care of their projects locally and not be, you know, further hampered by, uh, you know, federal policy. So uh, those efforts are ongoing. And as any, up we get any updates or any, you know, glimmers of hope, rays of sunshine, we'll certainly relay those to the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm on the same subject as, as Bill, and that has to do with the com combining of the GRRs. Mm -hmm. I kind of find it interesting that we had a, a, a fairly, fairly thorough report last month from the Corps, and there was no mention of this. And uh, I'd like, if you guys have, a little more background of how this popped up, and uh, if our, you know, we, do we have any influence over this at all, or, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's concerning basically from the standpoint of uh, the, uh, it could cause delays, um, could cause uh, our package, our authorization to be rolled into a much greater authorization. We know the, the troubles that uh, uh, SAFCA is having now getting the uh, Natomas Levy Improvement Program authorized and, you know, how that will affect us. We, that's, it's a concern that we need to really take a, a good look at. All right, a couple things. I'll see if I can cover the gamut because we, we kind of yeah, covered a lot. So <laughs> it, my understanding is the Natomas project was part of a SEPA study. So, yeah, so the, the, the Common Features GRR it should not be impacted or influenced by anything that is or will go on with the Natomas project. Um, but I think um, the impetus for combining these were – both of our GRRs are really close in timing. Theirs is a little ahead of ours in terms of when it got started and, and the schedule. Um, but they're so common in, in many of the alternatives that are talked about in the GRR that they're having very similar conversations with district and um, with region on the project. So, and we're both going through the changeover from the old process of the GRR to this new 3x3x3 three by three by three process. And so we'll, the two different GRR teams are sort of, if you will, winging it at the same time. So one of the thoughts was if they could get, get in front of region and headquarters uh, and combine the efforts, that it would be an uh, easier and more streamlined process to get it through those review processes as opposed to doing them separately. Um, from a purely selfish standpoint, from a SAFTA standpoint, if we can advance our schedule earlier, that's great. So that's one of our goals would be to have our GR schedule advanced slightly ahead of um, our current schedule, if possible. Um, but some of the risks are if there are any problems on the common features GRR that causes it to bog down, then, then we could bog down. But we plan to very clearly state our concerns. And we have a good dialogue with the Corps. Um, they understand our concerns. They understand our need for our schedule. They understand how it dovetails into crediting. They support that. Um, there's no intention, at least that we can tell, from the Corps' um, point of view that this is to make their job easier. Um, it's really to expedite and not just make it an easier way of doing business. So we, we seem to be on common ground as far as what the outcomes will be. Um, and again, we'll, we should know more tomorrow on where things are landing and, and where, we can, where we can expect to go from here. With a combined GRR like this, 
it, it would it would in the end require one um, combined authorization. Do we know? Um, yeah, that I, I believe so. And right now our schedules are so close that if both were authorized or completed at the same time, we would compete separately for federal appropriations or federal authorization. Yeah. By combining them, the thought is, and I forget the terminology, it's kind of like a super, it quali excuse me, qualifies as super project. We call it mega something here. Yeah, mega, mega project, project yeah. which typically gets more focus and attention um, because now it's- Hopefully in a good way. In a, in a good way. <laughs> you, get, you know, bigger bang for your buck, kind of a regional effort, um, and, and therefore maybe eligible for perhaps even additional appropriations or, or funding beyond what might have been done individually allocated. Okay. So. I would assume that the negotiations as we're going through on that, that uh, we talk to the staff from Max Daly's office to see what their reaction is to combining those. That, that will be the next step and a lot of that will be predicated on what happens tomorrow. But yes. Informational item. Meeting's adjourned.